Hello and welcome to Sarah Stampo Retreat. Today I'm going to be creating one of my magazine commissions with you and it's for a John Next Door magazine so by the time you see it it will be out and I'll link it in the description below. So it's one of the Craft Essentials premium magazines so you get loads of cool goodies with it. So in it you get this die set so you get the antlers that go either way you get this large tag and these holes to go with it you get this that cuts out this um, mistletoe you get this that cuts out these fur cones you get this that cuts out these berries you get a little bow that cuts out this bow then you obviously get the, the rest of the things on the stamp set as well so you've got some snowflakes you've got a small stag and you've got a load of really useful greetings you've got for Christmas wishes and mistletoe kisses seasons greetings mistletoe kisses Merry Christmas happy Christmas then you get this really cool embossing folder which I'll be using later so we can see that later and you get this paper pack so you can see there's a lot of tags some stags some really gorgeous papers and the formats quite similar on each of the pages so you get different tags different stags and different papers so I actually really like this one it's so useful and they the papers are really gorgeous. And that's the middle and we start again. So you get two of each. So it's a really lovely pack to play with. And of course you get the magazine as well, which will have loads and loads of inspiration in it. So let's get creating some cards. So for my first card, I've got a five by five card blank. That's made of thick basic white cardstock from Stampin' Up. Then I've got some Stampin' Up gold foil sheet that measures four and a half inches. This measures four and a quarter inches, and it's again some thick basic white cardstock that I've run through my die cutting machine in this embossing folder. So you can see the embossing folder gives a really, really lovely texture. And you could use it on that side, or you could use it on that side. So I'm going to lay those up and I've cut out two of these antlers as well. So then I want to heat embark the Merry Christmas and some of these snowflake stamps onto some basic white cardstock. I'm going to put the Merry Christmas a bit away from everything else because I want to cut a circle around it. So I'm just stamping in my verse marking. And then I'm going to use my Ultra New Antique Gold embossing powder. And you can see that because it's a very fine embossing powder, it picks up the details even on these very delicate images. So then I'm just going to pop on my heat tool. Now I'm going to take my layering circle dies. These ones are for Carnation's Crafts. I'm not sure if they're sold anymore. If they do, I'll link them below. But I know there's a lot of different layering circle dies on the market. So you probably have some in your stash. And I'm just going to find the right size of circles to fit each of my items. Now I'm going to use my mint tape from scrapbook.com to tape them down. This is like my new favourite thing because it's just got the right amount of tackiness to hold down the dies but doesn't seem to kind of tear the paper which I find with some washi tape it does and um, this is and it's also like a paper tape so I'm imagining that it's probably better for the environment as well although I've not actually looked into that so I'm going to go run this through my die cut machine Actually, for these little pieces, I'm just going to use my teeny tiny acidic side kit because that's perfect for these little ones. It takes less time than cranking it through my big machine. And do you see, they've not even stuck to the tape at all, let alone tearing. And you have to excuse the state of my machine. My machines always look a state because I use them for my own crafting, I use them for classes. And um, they've constantly got bits of tape stuck to them because I like to reuse my tape. So they're always a bit of a mess. 
but they're good little workhorses and I figure they're not here to look pretty, they're here to be used. And I think what I also would do is just heat emboss this bow. Then I want to pop this together. So I'm going to glue these pieces at the top of here first. And I'm going to take a couple of little bits of bone pads. And then I'm going to take my Jerry Rock. Jelly Roll Metallics Cura Pen and I'm going to draw some lines. So I'm just going to use the side of one of my uh, die cutting plates as a ruler. And I just want to draw a line from where I want my bauble to be up to the antlers. So it looks like they're hanging from the antlers. So then I can pop a couple of these behind and stick it on. And then let's go with the next one. Now I've just got a gold metallic pearl I'm just going to pop in the centre of the bow. I'm going to put one in the middle of some of these snow pants too. Now that this panel's done I can glue it to the front of my card. And I think I'll put it on a bit of foam tape onto the front of the card. I'm just actually going to dot a few more of these um, metallic pearls around. There we go, here's my finished card. Okay, so then for my next card, I've taken a 5x7 card blank and I've made that from Stampin' Up! Very Vanilla cardstock and I've cut a piece of the paper from the pad to a quarter of an inch smaller than the card front. So I'll just glue that on quick. And because these are papers as opposed to cards, you do want a really thin amount of glue because you don't want it to wrinkle. So as you see, I've hardly put any on really, just enough to kind of stick it down. And then I've got this tag which I've taken from the pack and I'm just going to glue it to a scrap piece of basic white cardstock. And you can see this is a piece that I was using for box making that um, didn't turn out right. So. It's got some score lines in it that's absolutely fine because all it's being used for is stability because, um, because this is paper, just needs something a bit more stable behind it for what I want to do. And then I'm going to take this die from the pack and I'm just going to die cut this. You can see the die is actually slightly smaller than the um, tags in the pack but the die will give it a nice finish so I'm going to use the die. And then I've got this deer that I want to use as well. I'm going to glue that to a piece of um, cardstock before I use that as well. Um, I think that the papers are fine when you just want to stick things down, but I want to pop this up so I want it to be a little bit more solid. I'm just going to glue that down and then I'm going to cut around it. And then the other thing that I want, I've got this red ribbon. Um, it's an unbranded ribbon. It's just one I've had in my stash for ages. I'm just going to tie a bow. And then I think I might also add a couple of, of um, lines of this across my card as well. So I'm going to put a little bit of um, just a permanent tape runner. And then I'm going to just pop some foam pads behind my stag. And then I'm also going to put some double sided foam pads behind my tag. And then I'm just going to add a glue dot behind my ribbon. 
So I've just cut some one and a half inch circles from these two are from the papers in the pack and this one's just from some um, basil cardstock and I'm just going to just cut them roughly in half. And I'm just going to glue those into there. So that's that card completed. So then for this next card, I'm going to make a circle card. So I've got two circles that you can see are near enough five inches out of white cardstock, thick white cardstock. And then I've got this one, which is um, some basil cardstock. And you can see it's kind of like a um, deep red with a slight silvery tinge to it. And that measures kind of nearly four and a half inches. And then I've got another white one, which is kind of nearly four and a quarter inches. So I cut those all out with my layering circle dies. And what I want to do with this is create kind of almost a wreath around the outside of this circle. And so I'm going to use my olive and moss inks from Altino. So I'm actually just going to stamp them in turn. I'm just going to go around the outside. I'm kind of going to overlap them a bit as well. And using the two colours just gives it that little bit extra depth. Now I'm just going to stamp um, the mistletoe in the moss. And you can see it's kind of a bit dotty. And that sometimes happens when you're using a stamp for the first time. So I'm just going to pop some um, Versamark ink and that somehow kind of seems to make the, um, the other ink stick better to the stamp. So let's try that again. And you can see I've got a much better impression that time. So I'm going to try it once more. So I'm going to do this again and then my moss again. And I'm just going to stamp it on the back here. I think that's much better look but actually I've decided I might want to go for the um, for black ink instead so I'm going to go with the Altenew Jet Black and then I'm going to colour it with my Dark and Light Mossy Meadow Stampin' Blend so these are alcohol markers Now I'm going to use some more of this ribbon that we used for the last card, just to create a bow. And then I'm going to just prep that with the first mark ink. And then I'm going to put it in my black ink. And I'm just going to cut that out. I just want to add a little bit of definition into the wreath. So I'm going to use my black ink just to add some little snowflakes in. So I'm going to create my um, card base. So I've just cut, cut a quarter of an inch off one side of my circle and then I'm butting that up against that side and then I'm just going to score this at four and a quarter inches and that way I can make sure that this line here is parallel to this line here so I'm just going to fold this and then I'm just going to add my glue just here and then I'm going to glue that to my other five inch circle so I'm just making sure those are nicely lined up and then that will stand up like that and because we've got this little bit here, then it won't rock and roll, it'll just stay like that. So then I'm going to glue on this layer. And then I'm going to glue on this layer. And then I'm just going to just line that up with one of these lines on here so that I can make sure 
that it's straight and then I'm just going to glue this so that it's at the top and I'm just going to put a bit of glue towards the top of the um, die cut because I quite like it when the bottom is um, just sticking up a little bit I think it adds a bit of dimension so I'm going to keep on just standing it up just so that I can make sure that everything is looking how I want it to and then let's just add one of these um, little dots glue dots to um, just add on that um, ribbon and then I think I'm going to just pop the sentiment up with some dimensionals and then I've cut out some of these circles just using these two dies I just used the two of them so that I could run two through at once um, and this same red cardstock here um, and I'm just going to pop one of these little red gems in the middle of each one just to give it a bit of shine so then I'm just going to add some glue dots behind these and then pop them around my little wrist And I decided that focal point needs a little bit more colour too, so I'm actually just picking out some of the mistletoe berries with some of these gems as well. I know that mistletoe is technically white. Then there's my finished card. So for my next card, I'm going to create a little pocket card. So I've got an A6 white card blank. So that's Eight and a quarter inches by five and seven eighths, scored and folded in half. And I'm just going over that with my embossing buddy, just to get rid of any finger marks or anything that might be on it. And then I'm going to take a blending brush and my Stampin' Up! Old Olive Ink. I'm just going to bring in a piece of scrap white paint to do my blending on too. And the more you build the colour, the smoother the look will be. Then I'm going to move on to some pear pizzazz ink. So you can see I've got no um, no real ink left on there, even though it looks green. So I'm just going to put it onto this lighter colour. You can see I've made a little mark there where I've just caught my fingernail in the ink and transferred it over but I'm not too worried because actually my focal point is going to cover that so I'm not going to worry too much about that and the final one I'm going to use is a soft sea foam Although that's not the smoothest blending you ever did see, I'm going to leave it like that because actually the focal point is going to cover up a large amount of it so you won't really notice too much. I just want kind of an effect. Then I'm just getting a little bit of Nouveau acrylic white paint. I'm just going to pop that on a block. Now I've just added a few drops of water just to make it very liquid and I'm just going to splatter that across the background. So we can leave that to one side to dry for a second and in the meantime I'm just going to glue this tag to some spare white cardstock and then I'm going to go die cut that with my die and when I die cut it I'm also going to use this whole one just to create a hole at the top as well and then I've also cut one of these um, kind of eyelets from um, that red cardstock that we've been using, the Basil, the Basil Basics one. I'm just going to glue that over that hole opening. And it just makes it look like it's got an eyelet through it. So then I'm just going to line up my card on the, at this one and a half inch mark on my mat. A lot of these type of mats have this 60 degree line on it. Um, if you don't have that, 
So you can just use your ruler and kind of guess at the angle. Now I'm doing this with a pen, I would advise doing it with a pencil, I'm only doing it with a pen so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just drawing a line across there. And then I'm going to turn it over, do the same thing, line it up at the one and a half inch mark, and then draw across the 60 degree line. So this will do the other corner. So you can see I've got this corner here and this corner here. Now I'm just going to use my um, just going to use my paper trimmer just to cut those corners off. And obviously it doesn't matter if it's not at a 60 degree angle. That's just the easiest way that I find to um, keep the two angles the same. And so then I want to create a little pocket at the bottom here. And I want to use that same angle to do it. So this time I'm going to line it up in the corner here. This time I'm just going to line it up where I can see both ends of the line. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue just around the edge of my card and then I'm just going to lay that down that line and that way it's going to be parallel to this line up here and that way this can still slide in and out but that's stuck down the bottom now I'm just going to trim this off and then I'm just going to use a bit of this ribbon, which is just something I've had in my stash for ages and ages. But you could kind of use, there's just so many like red Christmas ribbons around, isn't there? So you could kind of use whatever you've got. And I'm just going to pop that across there. And I'm just going to chop it off the other side. And then I think I might add a bit of this ribbon as well. And then I think I'm going to add some of this through here as well. And then I'm going to put a little bit more of that kind of snowflakey ribbon in the corner as well. So then I'm going to grab some little gold pearl gems. I'm just going to just pop some around this little wreath. And then I'm just going to grab a couple of um, snowflakes and I'm going to ink them up with Versamark ink. I'm just going to stamp those down here. And then I'm just going to sprinkle them with a bit of Altenew Gold Embossing Powder. It's called Antique Gold. So I've kind of decided I don't really like this bit down here. So I'm going to take this off a second. And I think I prefer this colour, which is another Basil Basics. So I'm going to pop this on here. You can see it's got a bit of texture to it as well, which adds a little nice something. In fact, I might just leave a little bit of the white border from what's underneath on there. And then I'm just going to trim it down there. And that's the thing, I always think if you don't like something, just change it. It's just a bit of paper, isn't it? Like, so then I want to use the Christmas Wishes and off here. But I want to use the slightly greyed off um, colour that's on the paper pack. So I'm just going to stamp that Christmas Wishes and onto just a bit of the grey that's in between. And I'm doing that in Merry Merlot ink from Stampin' Up. And I think another thing I'm just going to do is just pop a little border of snowflakes along here. So then let's pour some of that, more of that gold Altenew embossing powder over there. And then I'm just going to pop a tabs on the back of this. Now if you wanted to make this as a true pull out card so that you could write a message on the back you could just add it onto this bit and then the tag would pull out underneath but because I'm going to do this as a design for the magazine so no one's going to pull it out I'm just going to um, secure it on the back.
And so then that's that card finished. So then for my final card, I've got a top folding A6 note card, but I've cut it off the front at one and a half inches. So there's one and a half inches here, and then I've just cut it off. And inside the card, I'm just going to heat emboss some of the snowflakes in gold. So let's just wipe that over with my embossing buddy. And I'm not too worried about covering the whole thing, because I'm going to cover up this bit at the bottom as well. So I'm just focusing on the kind of like central bit. And then I'm going to pour over some of our antique gold embossing powder that I'll turn you on. Then I've got this piece of acetate that is um, about 4.4 4 and 8 inches square and I'm just going to glue that onto this top part this piece so this is a four and eight inch by two inches so and that makes up the rest of our card front and then I've got two extra pieces so I've got a piece that is one and a half by four and an eight here just to go over the top of there so that that just looks nice so then I'm going to cut out this stag I'm just going to glue a little bit of cardstock behind him before I cut him out just to give him a bit of strength Then I'm just going to stamp this Merry Christmas with Stampin' Up Merry Mellow ink onto some spare white cardstock. I'm actually going to try that in Cherry Cobbler ink as well just to see because that one's very slightly dark. So then I've cut that out with one of my layering circle dies and I've cut out a circle of gold foil sheet from Stampin' Up as well. So I'm just going to glue those together. And then I've also just cut some strips of paper to go on the um, card as well. So I've got a piece of gold foil sheet that is an inch and a quarter and a piece of this blue paper from the pack that is one inch wide. And then for the bottom, I've got a piece of gold that is an inch and three quarters. The blue is an inch and a half. And then I've just taken a little strip of white cardstock that I've just embossed with that embossing folder. So that's like a half inch strip that I'm just going to lay across there. So let's glue all those bits on. So then I'm just going to glue this tag on and I'm going to use tape on for the body so it sticks nicely to the, um, to the acetate. I'm just going to grab some dimensionals and put them on the back of here. And then we've got this cute card with the kind of see-through background. That's nice because when you open, when when the card's standing up, the um, snowflakes are in the background rather than if you had them on the acetate, then they would be right behind here. So let's bring in the other cards. So there are today's cards completed. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd appreciate you clicking like below, and you can also press subscribe if you'd like to see future videos. If you press 
The bell button and select all then YouTube will also notify you when I've got new videos available. Most of the products that I've used for today's cards are listed in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon.